Right. Alright, you got your joke brought up? Mm-hmm. Ready to go? Yep. Okay. Alright. Good afternoon, it's Robert and Julia Miller with the J. Patel Group and Rethink Real Estate with another exciting real estate update. Exciting fun Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yeah. Beautiful weather we're having, oh mm. my gosh. Yep. Our morning walks have just been spectacular. Fall so. has broken. Yes. <laughs> or summer has broken. Um, what episode, episode are we on? 48. 48. Don't okay. forget to like and subscribe. We much appreciate it. Thank Share with you. a friend. All right. Do you have a joke for us? I do. So the oldest computer was owned by Adam and Eve. It was an apple <laughs> with very limited memory. <laughs> Just one bite and everything crashed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like it. Uh, okay. Just to remind you on the format of our... Um, video we kind of do start things out with a joke and some history and then we jump right into news um, sometimes we have um, updated articles to kind of go along with the news which i think both of us do today mm -hmm. and then we jump into uh, rates uh, interest rates for the week and inventory numbers for the northwest valley so, that's the format just to remind you and i always put links too so you can jump ahead to whatever um, section of the video you want to listen to. Right. So. Okay. I actually have a couple jokes. Oh. Yeah, okay. A little bit of overachieving. Mr. Funny here. Guy. All yeah. right. If you call me from a private line, I'm going to respect your privacy and not answer it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I like this one too. Uh, times sure have changed. In biblical days, when an ass spoke, it was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now no one listens. <laughs> now it happens all the time. All right. all right. There's your joke of the day. A little bit of history. Okay. All Let's right. 2006. History. Facebook opened September 26 wow. to everyone 13 years oh, yes. or older with a valid email address. Yes, that's right. 2006. 1982, on September 30th, Cheers begins an 11-year mm. run on NBC TV. And we all watched, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Norm was my favorite. Norm, I love. Norm yeah. was my favorite character. 1955, the first World Series game broadcast in color. In color. Airs September 28th. That was 1955. 1829, London's reorganized police force called Scotland Yard mm. is introduced September 29th. Scotland Yard. 1825, like what's that? I like it, I like 1825, the first passenger train travels September 26th from Darlington to Stockton, England. Wow, what was that, 18? 18? 1825, per first passenger wow. train. And then finally, uh, in 1066, William the Conqueror's oh. army invades England September 28th. Oh boy. oh boy. So was he named the Conqueror because of his accomplishments or was that really his job title? <laughs> really, I think it was his job title. William, you are the Conqueror. You're the Conqueror. Go out and conquer. Go. It's your <laughs> job description. 1066. <laughs> um, anyway. Maybe so. All right, there's a little bit of history for this week. Let's go through some news. On to economic news. Economic. Uh, all three major U.S. stock indexes rose late last week as the Federal Reserve held steady on interest rates and pledged tapering of bond purchases soon. However, there's You're a in the same thing over and over and over, yeah, and over but, again. There's going to be a meeting. Okay. okay that's according okay. to Reuters. Uh, existing home prices. Median existing home prices for all housing types in August was $356,700. Mm -hmm. That's up 14.9, a continued double digit up yep. from the previous month. Yep. Uh, and that'll be the same way through the, that'll be November. In September. See, what's this for August? So it'll be yeah. September, October, November, and December will all be double digit. Hmm. Um, the you really think September will? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll still be double digit okay. from what it was last year. 
Um, the inventory of existing homes on the market remains more than 13% below last year's levels, but there are more than 700,000 homes under construction. Under construction, wow. That is a lot of homes. Huh. No wonder we're having lumber shortages and material shortages. Paint. Well, I've got an article that, that speaks to that number, so hold on to that number. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. That's according okay. to Mortgage News Daily. Okay. Uh, since July 2020, most underwater homeowners who owe more on their mortgages than their homes were worth hmm. were bailed out by surging home values. Right. Okay. Homeowner equity grew 2.9 trillion. Woo. Wow, that's a lot that's of wealth. That's 14.9. What that interprets to as far as uh, total 29.3 percent. Uh, total equity over the same the period States. since July of 2020. Wow. Everybody is up almost 30% in their equity. Uh, average, what that comes wow. out to, average of dollars, $51,500 per household. Hmm. That's a nice chunk of change. Wow, it is, yeah. Okay, uh, regulatory news. Let's see, wait a minute. Um, I'm, no, you're on I'm on housing. housing. I'm yeah, sorry, housing. I jumped ahead. Mm -hmm. Housing news. Uh, summer bidding declined in August. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a bit of a slowing and getting back to more seasonal demand and, and uh, what we typically expect this time of year. Somewhat. S yeah, summer, yeah, it's still a seller's market, but it's less frenzied. Right. Less. Summer bidding declined in August amid slowing seasonal demand and higher home prices. Listed homes received an average of 3.8 offers during the month, down from 5.1 in May. The what's normal pre-pandemic competition typically ranges about two to three offers per month. Uh-huh. That's what you can expect. So we're definitely above the typical, but not much. I mean, you know. 3.8. 3.8 yeah, versus two we're not to three. In crazy land anymore of 5.1. Right. So that was definitely frenzied. Yep. Uh, as home prices rose in August for the 114th consecutive month, we wow. are on a run, man. Whoa. 14th month. The share of first-time buyers declined to 29%, down from 33% as recently as August of 2020. Existing home sales fell 2%, ending two months again. And again, as the market <clears throat> slowed, we're seeing, you know, the number of... Uh, uh, sales falling off too, so that's mm -hmm. not surprising. Sales were down across all home types, but still 9.5% higher than a year earlier. So here's something that we always hear. I'm just gonna wait till prices go down. 114th month. That they've gone up. <laughs> they go up. Yeah, <laughs> so knows, prices rarely go down. <laughs> and we're still in double so, digit compared to last year every single month. So if now is the right time for you to buy, now's the time to buy. Right. You're going to have instant equity. Yes. Okay. Um, that was according to National Association of Realtors. Okay. Um, August data showed prospective buyers may be turning to new homes due mm -hmm. to meager existing home inventory. That's true. We just went over that 700,000 homes under construction. That's according to Mortgage News. If data. they can wait, that's the thing. Because we got to yeah. wait for those homes to be built. And yeah, they're taking eight build to ten times, months. Yeah, build yeah. times are still hanging out at ten months. So. However, some home builders are getting a jump on mm -hmm. things, they're getting the permitting done, that mm -hmm. usually takes two months, they're getting that out of the way. And they're actually starting on the homes before they release them. So right. sometimes you're only looking at five months or six months. So most of the time anymore, you can't walk in and say, uh, I want this floor plan. And they say, oh, okay, sure. What lot do you want that on? And you pick from a couple lots that they currently have released. It doesn't really work that way anymore for the most part. Some builders mm -hmm. may still Some be able to still. do that. But, but otherwise, they're saying, okay, this home is on this lot, this home is on this lot, this home is on this lot. Which one do you want? <laughs> and these are the options that we've already picked for that right. home. Right, and sometimes so you flooring, can Flooring, paint color, yeah. cabinets, countertops may already be selected. Yeah. So, so something to be prepared for. All right. Okay, the Fed last week pledged to reveal a bond buying tapering plan. So we're back to talking <laughs> about that from just a little bit Into ago. Into regulatory news. Yep. 
plan at its next policy meeting in November. November. Unless. <laughs> unless. Quantifier. Unless mm -hmm. the October 8th jobs report is extremely poor. And this is October 1st, so that's only so seven days away. What would make this job report poor, extremely poor? Uh, not uh, generating as many new, new jobs, jobs as expected. I don't see that And happening. then the other thing that they do at the same time is they look at unemployment uh, filings. Right. And see if that number is in line. But we know that's been low. So, or it's been well, no, lower than expected. Oh. No, it's jumping all over the, oh. all over the scale. Darn, okay. It just never seems to be what's expected. One time we'll get a pleasant surprise and the other time we'll get a unpleasant surprise. Everybody is thinking, oh, the jobs report's going to be great, and then it's terrible, and then they go, oh, I don't expect much from the job report, and then it's way over, you know, so it can't hmm. seem to, trying to predict it seems to be extremely difficult. Well, unfortunately, difficult. we do have <clears throat> some healthcare workers that are being let go, unfortunately, fired, um, because... For not getting vaccinated. They're not getting their vaccinations, yeah, so... Yeah. That could that could impact it. Yeah. And I I think I've heard of claims, teachers yeah. as well. There's some districts I forget what state it's not Arizona, but there's a some states that have let go teachers as well. Mm -hmm. Or teachers have New quit. York and California yeah, New York, would be my guesses. New York was on the list, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. think I saw California, but I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, a little bit of foreclosure, something we definitely want to keep an eye on. Foreclosure starts rose by 7,000 in August. Okay. Not a surprise as a federal moratorium wrapped up July 31st. Right. And that mm -hmm. did not get renewed. Right. Um, there were 80% fewer starts, foreclosure starts, meaning 91st day of delinquency. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were 80% fewer starts last month than in August of 2019. 2019, not talking 2020. But more than 1.3 million loans remain seriously delinquent. Mm. And I believe... I don't know what that curtails. They're, they're in foreclosure on the 91st day. What would seriously be 60? Six, well, I would think six months. No, no, 91st so, day 91st you go into... Day. Mm -hmm. That's three months. You go yeah, into foreclosure. Yeah, de delinquent. So they haven't reached foreclosure yet, oh, but they're okay. considered seriously uh, delinquent. So is that 60 days? It must be. Wow. I would think. I wouldn't think 30 days would be, so it must be 60 days. Yeah, two months behind. Yeah, so you got okay. 1.3 million. Hmm. And we'll double check that to make sure we get that right. <laughs> Okay, it, that's, it still is um, surprising um, that people are sitting on it, but, you know, where'd they go? So that's, you know, that's part of the problem where they think their situation's mm -hmm. going to improve, so they wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a number of different reasons yeah, why. Yeah, there is. So. All right, well, thank you for sharing All the news right. with us, so then. that's your news for the week. Um, interesting article uh from uh realtor.com is this realtor.com yeah realtor.com uh, magazine yeah magazine yeah uh more new homes sale homes more new homes are being built with four plus bedrooms, four plus bedrooms. so more americans are desiring bitter bigger homes since the pandemic with and builders are responding and there's basically two different reasons okay. um share of Work new from home yeah uh, that's not mentioned in here, but I gotta believe that plays into it a little I, bit. They need to start consulting me on these articles. <laughs> I'll let the editor know. Okay. <laughs> okay, the share of new single family homes with four or more bedrooms posted a sharp uptick, unlike in recent years, the National Association of Home Builders reports on its Eye on Housing blog. Uh, okay. The share of single-family homes started with four-bedroom rose from 42.6 to 45.2. Hmm. And that's from 2019 to 2020. These developments are linked to changes in the makeup of home buyers from the previous years. And I hadn't thought about it from this angle, but 
2020, the detrimental economic effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, a low interest rate, so your mortgage price is lower, so you mm -hmm. can buy more house. Right. Um, so they want larger homes because their mortgage is such that sure. they can buy larger homes. Well, we might as well have a little more square footage yeah, if so we can afford well it. Yeah, so might as well have a little more square footage. Yeah. So that's one angle. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is a need for more space also by, uh, growing as Americans embrace multi-generational multi living. Multi-generational, yep. And you think about it, baby boomers are starting to age now and mm -hmm. they need, uh, you know, a little bit of assistance of living, you know, so why not be at home? And I think families, the pandemic mm -hmm. has made the family dynamic closer. Mm -hmm. People are more yep. wanting to spend time with their family and loved yeah. ones. And uh, I think the pandemic has made, late, you know, made people realize life is precious. All and good things, yeah. It can be taken away very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is playing into that dynamic yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, made people realize so. what's really important in life, and mm -hmm. that's, yeah, your family. Now this piece is interesting, though. Um, as homes get larger, lot sizes are shrinking. <laughs> Boy, don't we know yes. that around here. Yeah. Uh, analysis of the U.S. Census Bureau by Storage Cafe shows that the median home size is now about 2260. That's up from 2170 in 2010. Mm -hmm, 2010. Uh, but the median lot size has decreased 18%. It went from 10... <laughs> 500, 10,500 in 2010, down to 8,700 square feet in 2020. And I can tell you, in a yeah. lot of the communities, 8,700 is a large lot. That's actually lot. a pretty good sized lot for yeah. what we see we, around here in the Northwest Valley. We see 5,900, 6,200, 6,300. Yeah. Quite common. Quite common, so, yeah. Yeah. The lots just, as land gets more and more Lands. expensive, the lots get smaller Lands and smaller. Land's more scarce. Yep. Yep. Well, we were talking about those 700,000 um, 700, homes currently in production. Right. Um, new construction. New construction. Some of those numbers, and my statistics show 5 to 10% of the new build homes currently built, being built are being built for rent. Right. Which means um, there's a whole community that they're building to rent out. Every home in there will be for rent. I just, I had a revelation this week when I was, we were looking at homes and there was one in the neighborhood that was for rent. It was a brand new home that they built. Mm -hmm. And specifically the investor. We showed it on accident. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, is buying it brand new and then yeah. uh, renting it. Yeah, there's the a, rental rate is two thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yes, that and it's, means wasn't a big home. It was, it was like eighteen hundred square feet, nineteen hundred square feet. Three bedroom, two bath. I think it had a den. Den, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> wow, that means you need to make thirty six thousand dollars a year just to pay your rent. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's usually a and third then, of your income, thereabouts. Yeah. And so then, that's, that's quite a bit. <laughs> that is a lot of coin, $36,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most and mortgages don't cost that much. And that's an expense. You don't mm -hmm. get anything back out of that. It's right. Every month it's gone. It so just, these huh. communities, thank you for derailing me. Sorry about that. <laughs> These communities are planned from the inception to be rental homes. These units are typically grouped together in one area, similar to a master plan community, with all residents being renters. Right. And we actually have a few of those um, very close to Vistancia. Christopher Todd. And in Vistancia, there are rental homes that were built to be rental homes um, mm -hmm. by a developer that only does Oh, them. right. right. Um, yeah. BB so, Living yes, the BB original Living owner. Was, I'm not sure who owns it now. Yep. T They've TC1. Sold. They've yeah. sold, yep. And then, yeah, we have a Christopher Todd where Vistancia and Happy Valley split. That community was just like this to where the center has the amenities, just like a master plan community would. But all the homes in there look exactly the same. It's yeah. very cookie cutter, very... Yep. 50s neighborhood looking almost mm -hmm. um, 
and yeah, they're all renters. And you talk about so. small lots. Oh yeah, these are <laughs> cozy. <laughs> So yes, as we discussed, five to 10% of the new build homes currently in production are now build for rent homes. And Phoenix is the third largest mar market by unit count. That doesn't surprise For single me. family and rent build to rent housing. And it has the lowest occupancy rate, yeah, lowest vacancy rate, I'm sorry, lowest vacancy rate since 1984. That's a long time. <laughs> 1984 wow. was when um, we had interest rates in the sevens, wasn't it? I think. Oh, that's it was when, more than I think that. The, the interest rates were super high then. Yeah, they were in yeah. double digit. Yeah. So, um, one more, a couple more little points here. We do have Mark Taylor Communities is one, and I've seen they actually have several communities um, on, in Surprise that I know of mm. um, that are these little neighborhoods that have their own amenities and um, are build to rent homes. Um, a, a funny point or an interesting point that I had about it um, is that the average build to rent tenant stays three times longer than in a multi-family unit. So like the condos and the apartment Apartments, buildings. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're more comfortable. Yeah, I like mean, you me, do have right? your own house. It's mm -hmm. not, so you're not having party walls and you do have a little bit of a yard mm -hmm. of your right. own. So yeah, it's a little more, yep. it's a single family residence. Yeah. So yeah, I can understand that. The mural who is uh, part of Mark Taylor, I believe, um, concludes that built to rent houses are here to stay. He says there will be 80,000 units started this year, 120,000 units started in 2022, and, and 700,000 wow. over the next five years nationwide. Those are nationwide. Wow, numbers. that's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Again, this yeah. article also comes from NAR as well. Well, so. there's a need, and we have a desperate need for housing there's this is going to help fill that need it's going to get know? filled it's yeah. the way our economy works yeah and i think you've got some millennials that say well i'm not ready to own a house yet i want to live in a house or um, you still have some that don't believe in home ownership because right. they saw the crash mm -hmm. and went well maybe it's not such a great investment i don't want to get caught in that and or maybe you have those baby boomers that um, have a fixed income they still want to own a house or have a house so the rent while they do traveling right you know yeah they want the freedom to be able to yeah move so yeah. the rental market's still there for sure all right moving on your rates ticked up slightly ever mm -hmm. so slightly this uh, week 30 years at 3.181 mm -hmm. 15 okay. year 2.376 and the VA rate is 2.820. All right. Yeah. Inventory actually ticked down slightly. Uh, Valley is 7646. We were at 7710, so it's it's pretty nominal, but mm -hmm. okay. did tick down a little bit. Yeah. Peoria is at 243 and Surprise at 258. Both ticked down just oh a, down just okay. a few. Okay. Yeah, not very many. Okay, closer to home, Trilogy at Bastantia has 10 homes available. Ooh, okay. Price range 399900 to 950000 Wow, we're under under 400000 Wow. That's that Rebus that oh, okay. uh, they've been reducing the price on that. Uh, that is owned by Zillow. Zillow. And. Uh, cute house. Uh, yeah. It's a contemporary, kind of an urban contemporary kind of decor yeah but it, it's two bedroom two bath and it <laughs> yes. has no den no and office space which is fine not everybody needs that 1309 square feet yeah so it's got pretty, a good size backyard pretty though. small yeah it has a big backyard mm -hmm. because the house is so small so. Mm -hmm. okay yeah. moving on Vistancia village has 21 homes price range 355,000 to 920,000 okay Blackstone Country Club is down to three homes, 519900 and top of the list, 1200000 Seems like that's what it was last week, too, but I could be wrong. Oh, was it three then, too? I think too? so, yeah. Yeah, I probably got it here. Let's see. You are correct. Right. It's a mirror image of last yeah. week. Good memory. <laughs> 
Okay, Cordabella is down to three now. Down I think three. we had seven last uh, week, yeah. so a bunch of those went under contract. That's and um, oh believe it or not, that one that was at a million ah, fifty thousand is not on the list that anymore. Up, huh? Yeah. So there are only three. Price range six hundred and twenty-five thousand to seven hundred and ten thousand. Okay. Sun City Grand, thirty-one homes available. Price range three hundred and twenty-four thousand one hundred. To a high of eight hundred and seventy-four thousand nine hundred. Sun City Grand, okay. Sun City West has fifty-three available. Price range one hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred to a high of eight hundred and forty-nine thousand. That's, that's a pretty, pretty good. For Sun City West, that's pretty expensive. Pretty good inventory though. Fifty-three homes. That's yeah. yeah that's pretty good. Yeah, well, it's a big community. It is, yeah. Finally, Westbrook Village has eight homes available. Ah. 325,000 being the most affordable and 515,000 being the most expensive. There we go. And that's your inventory for the week. All right. All right. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for joining us and uh, have a fabulous weekend. Enjoy this weather. Have a blessed week and we will see you next We're week. We're hoping to have a uh, walkthrough video done. Um, today. Yes. Um, We're going to go do the, the Mita Club Mita out Club in Trilogy at Vistancia. Yeah. I think it'll be a really nice day for that. And it's been a while mm -hmm. since we've been able to do one. So, yep. happy to get that out. Right. All right. See you again. <laughs> Bye for now. Hopefully it stays that way for the entire no, video. Don't breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. All right, you got your joke brought up. <laughs>